Hello and welcome to the DAT Booster Dental Admissions Series. My name is Alex Klajian and I'm a rising first year student at the University of California, San Francisco School of Dentistry. I just graduated from Villanova University this past spring where I majored in chemical engineering. I applied to dental school this past cycle and found a lot of success in the process. In total, I applied to 15 schools, I interviewed at 11, and I received offers of admission from all 11. Some of the schools I got into were Harvard, Columbia, and University of Pennsylvania. I learned a lot about the dental school admissions process this past year, and I'm super excited to share this knowledge with all of you. This first video will focus on a general introduction to dental school admissions. So you have decided that you want to apply to dental school, and that's awesome. Now, before you apply, there are a variety of pre-application requirements that you will need to fulfill just to have your application looked at by an admissions committee. So we're gonna start with the academic requirements. On this slide, I've included every class that every dental school in the country requires. So these classes include a full year of inorganic chemistry with lab, a full year of organic chemistry with lab, a full year of biology with lab, full year of physics with lab, two writing intensive English courses, and a half year of biochemistry whose lab is optional. Keep in mind that these required courses must be done by the time that you actually enter dental school. And honestly, I would recommend completing all of these before you even apply to dental school. Some dental schools will require additional coursework as well. So it's important that you take the time to go onto each dental school's website and check their specific requirements. And lastly, upper level science and biology coursework is not required, but it's strongly encouraged. Taking those courses will prove that you can handle the rigorous course load of dental school later on. The next pre-application requirement we have are dental experiences. In applying to dental school, you're really committing yourself to this profession for the next 40 plus years. So it's important that you take the time to enter a dental office and make sure this is the line of work you want to pursue. The number of required shadowing hours varies by dental schools across the country. The average requirement is around 100 hours, but I generally recommend shooting for 150. This number will likely meet every dental school in the country and oftentimes exceed most requirements. Keep in mind that dental experiences are not limited to only shadowing. Doing work such as dental assisting or secretary work within a dental office also show an active interest in the profession. And lastly, most dental school interviews will ask you about these experiences. So make sure you are remaining observant and active while in the dental office. The last section of pre-application requirements are additional requirements. So in order to apply to dental school, you will need an undergraduate degree completed prior to the time that you enter your school. You will also need a DAT score, either completed or anticipated. Keep in mind that it takes around two to four weeks for your DAT score to be verified after you take the exam. What this means is that your application will not be considered complete until that score is officially verified. You will also need experiences and achievements that round out the application and a personal statement, which is a 4,500 character response to the question, why dentistry? Finally, you will need reference letters from individuals that can speak to both your work ethic and your character. I mentioned the DAT on the previous slide, and I wanted to hone a little bit more into that topic. DAT stands for Dental Admissions Test, and it is made up of six sections. Those sections include biology, general chemistry, organic chemistry, perceptual ability, reading comprehension, and quantitative reasoning. The average DAT score is an 18, while the average DAT score of acceptance is between a 20 and a 21. If you're looking for help in preparing for this exam, you are in the right place. Students that use DAT Booster average a 21 on the test. Students typically block out between two and three months to study for the DAT, just because it is so dense in the topics that it covers. Also, if your exam does not go as well as you originally hoped, you have to wait 90 days between attempts. 
And as mentioned earlier, your application is not considered complete until your DAT scores are submitted and verified. Now that we have discussed all of the pre-application requirements, we're going to go through a general admissions timeline. So the application cycle starts in May, the year before you would enter dental school. In early May, the IDEA ATSAS application has a soft opening. This means that you can go into the application and start inputting your information, but you're not allowed to actually submit the application yet. In early June, the application has a hard opening, meaning you're allowed to press submit and finally send that application to all of your dental schools. From the middle of August until the middle of November, there is the first wave of interviews. Dental schools will typically interview their top candidates during this period of time, so hopefully you are getting a lot of interviews in between these months. In early December, dental schools will issue their first wave of acceptances to those students that interviewed between August and November. From early December through January, there is what is called the academic update period. So if you took any classes between the months of May and December, this is the period of time where you will release your grades to those dental schools that you applied to. In early February, the IDEA ADSAS application closes and you are no longer allowed to apply to any more dental schools. So I know many people may see that and think, that's awesome, I have from May till February to apply, that's plenty of time. Unfortunately, that is not really the case. Many dental schools operate on a rolling basis, so you want to submit your application as early as possible. Honestly, submitting in the month of September is considered late, so I would highly recommend trying to send out those applications during the summer. From early January until early April, there is a second wave of interviews. And lastly, through the months of March and May, there is the second wave of acceptances for both those students that interviewed early in the process and those ones later to fulfill any remaining seats. In case you were looking for some more specific dates, I have included the admissions timeline for the 2021 to 2022 cycle. This slide follows the same trend as the general timeline. The only difference that you might notice is that between August 13th and September 30th, there is a first academic update period. This period of time is meant for students to tell their dental schools the grades that they got and any courses that they took over the summer. I wanted to take some time to just emphasize again the rolling admissions aspect of the dental school admissions process. Schools will review applications as they receive them and then offer interview invitations. What this means is that it's important to apply as early as possible to optimize your chances of acceptance. One of the biggest mistakes that people will make in this process is waiting too long to apply. Many dental schools will publish submission deadlines on their websites, but don't follow those deadlines. Apply as early as you possibly can. If you are interested in applying to dental schools located in the state of Texas, you will need to use a separate application portal. So almost every dental school in the country uses the IDEA ADSAS portal, but Texas dental schools use a separate one called the TMDSAS portal. Texas dental schools have some of the cheapest tuition among all dental schools in the country. However, they maintain a strong preference for in-state students. So unless you have something in your application that's really outstanding and unique and you are from out of state, it might not be worth applying to Texas dental schools. The TMDSAS application is very similar to the IDEA ADSAS one. The main difference is that the personal statement is limited to 5,000 characters as opposed to 4,500. Anyways, this concludes an introduction to the dental admissions process. I'm super excited for this series, and on this slide, I've included the four main focuses of this series. They include navigating the IDEA ADSAS application, the personal statement, composing a dental school list, and preparing for dental school interviews.